go on Facebook, Facebook we got that, 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 that going. Oh, I'm a little, sorry, sorry for a little, little bit of technical, technical difficulties. difficulties. I don't, I don't know what happened, happened there. there. Um, um, and, and we are also now back, back on, on YouTube, YouTube as, as well. well. So, so we're back, back live, live on all, all of that. that. And, and uh, we'll, we'll be back, back on, on the Spreaker too, too, so if you're listening there, there uh, we, we will, will be able, able to get that, that going again, again too. too. Not, sure. Not sure, technology, technology sometimes, sometimes is a little, little fickle, fickle, I guess. I guess. And yes, yes, and, and, and we are also back, back on, on speed speed. So we're all up and running again. again. Yes, 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 episode, episode five. five. It's a really it's a uh, uh, odd episode. episode. No, 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 you know, no system, system and, and everything, everything else seems to be working, working perfectly, perfectly okay, okay, except, except for now all of a sudden we want to connect. connect so, so uh, but we're but back. We're good. And just make sure you can hear me right. I did hear you. And I can hear you. So we're all good. Let's, Let's see. see. Let's, Let's get, get our, our Facebook, Facebook chat, chat going, going so, so that, that we can, can um, just make just sure that, uh, you know, anybody wants to come in and ask questions, questions things like that. that. And and we, we, we supposedly, supposedly have, have a good guest, guest but he's MIA, MIA at, the at the moment. moment. That's, that's okay. okay. Uh, we'll get we'll him on. We'll get him on. And I don't know. Do you have anything new going on for you? For me, I have the usual, I'm going back to work of, uh, the aftermath of COVID, and we still have some COVID patients, but we we're pretty good, uh, you know. And New York is is holding strong. So thanks to the governor and the mayor now, and um, everyone that has supported the healthcare force for the city. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We're, we're opening, opening up now. now it's it's faster, faster than, than I thought, thought we would. We would. Uh, um, I actually, I actually get, to get to open, open the shop. The shop. I'm um, decided, decided on opening, opening on some solstice. solstice. So, so brand, brand new, new start, start fresh, fresh, new, you know, you know uh, uh, new, new light, light and all that. that. So, so uh, I think it'd be a good day to, to do that. that. I, haven't, I, haven't, I, haven't I haven't officially announced, announced it until just now, I guess, now, I guess but, but uh, um, I'll, be I'll be doing, doing an official announcement next week. So I'll be opening the shop again, you know, all of that. Let's see. Do you want to talk, talk about, about our guest that's supposed, supposed, supposed to be coming, coming on? on. We'll, I'll, give I'll give a call while you're doing, doing that. that. He was supposed to be coming on at 7 Sharp, but uh, you never know what, what could have transpired. Uh, he is an amazing uh, teacher, an elder, wizard, and personality. Uh, his name is Obron Zell. Uh, he's been... A dear friend that helped me out when I was um, actually looking for someone, an elder, that would be doing the acknowledgement for Lady Rhea's book, second book, which is the Enchanted Formulary. And uh, he chipped in. He actually, through one of my dear friends and editors, uh, David Moore, he was able to contact him, and, and I was uh, then able to chat with him and he was willing to read uh, the manuscript and give me uh, a blurb so that was uh, exciting yes, yes for, uh, my for Lady Rhea when I was doing uh, the publishing for the uh, Enchanted Formula so that that transpired and that's how I got to interact with him more and then uh, we were in Salem and I was at um, with Gypsy Ravish, and she she at her at her uh, shop. It's no longer there. The New Aeon, and she, uh, especially at the Temple of the Nine Wells. And she was telling me that she was having uh, Obron to come and visit. So that was exciting. I would I wish I was there when he did come visit Salem. Mm -hmm. He was at the, here in the East Coast, so uh, I didn't get to see him, but I got to talk to him, and he's a great guy, and I'm really happy to have him if he does appear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 well, well, you know, you know, he, you know, he, he's, he's uh, coined, the, coined term the term of himself, himself being, uh, being uh, you, know, you know, the Wizard, the Wizard of Oz. Of Oz. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe he's behind the curtain somewhere, so, uh, well, well, we'll, we'll, we'll keep, keep this going. going. I'm sure, I'm sure we, we both have a lot to talk about because we're talking about so many different things, things so, so, you know, we can, uh, until, oh, until, until we get in touch, touch with him. So. He's a great elder, and he, uh, he's controversially known, you know, with the unicorns, 
uh, the goats uh, with one horn and and uh, he's, he's uh, and his uh, late wife uh, morning glory and so it's it's something that uh, he's been such a uh, with Green Egg magazine mm -hmm. and, uh, you know he's, he's such a great uh, personality within the pagan community and of course he contributed and coined what we have today neo-pagan so all his yeah yeah, 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 yeah. What, I what I love about him, him you know, you know is, 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 is he's such, such an amazing, amazing storyteller, storyteller. You know, you know, he he he, he, he can, can tell, tell you about a leaf fall off, off of a tree, of a tree which is so mundane to us, us and make it, it so magical, magical and so, so miraculous. <laughs> just it, it, it's, it's every little thing. thing. He, he just tells, tells the story, story that, that it, it is, is unbelievable. unbelievable. You know, yeah. Um, and 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 when I when I when met him a couple years ago in Pennsylvania, he came up from Pennsylvania, and 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 it was. It wasn't, it wasn't really, really a class, class you, know? you know. It wasn't, it wasn't really, really like a workshop, workshop type, type thing. thing. It was, it was really, really him just telling, telling stories. stories, and it was, and it was within, within those, those stories that, that were, were the lessons. lessons. You know, you know it, was it was just the way, way that he that presented, presented himself, himself. And just, just the way, way um, you know, you things, things can go. go. So, 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 we, we just got, got two people, people saying, saying that I have an echo, echo and that could, could be from Skype. Skype. So, so I'm going, going to work, work on that, that as well, well as, as we talk. talk. So, so thank you for letting, letting us know, uh, uh, Natalie, Natalie and, and uh, George. Oh, it's not always the same way. <laughs> she was excited that we had Obronzel. She wanted Obronzel for her podcast as well. <laughs> All right. All right. Is that Is a little, that little better, better, better Natalie? Just, just let us know, know if, if uh, I still, I still have, have an echo. echo. Um, um, I think I, think I, I uh, fixed, fixed that. that. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot, lot I, I, there's so many so different, different buttons, buttons and things, things like, like that. that. So, so um, um, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I, did. I did. Oh, she, oh, said, she I said I did. I did. <laughs> and, and we, we stole him. him. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, well, maybe, 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 maybe we can have you on if, uh, if uh, he doesn't appear. appear. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll patch, patch you. That would be kind of cool. cool. We'll we'll a lot of fun. fun. Oh, Natalie, she is. Yes. For sure. So this thing I have an echo. I'm not sure where it's coming from. Because I don't hear it. Um... Oh, and I don't hear it. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm not, not sure. sure. Are you are on? You on uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that would be on Facebook. Facebook. I'm not, not sure where it's coming, coming from. from because let me try, try one, one other thing. How's that? Is that any better? Just let us know, guys, and um, try trying to fix it, trying to figure out uh, all the different ways to. Uh, when I tell you it's like five different programs running at one time, and you know, if I, I'm not hearing it, so I always do a test and everything else. But uh, if it's still happening, just let me know. Uh, still happening. Uh, well, well, we'll work on it as we go along. So um, maybe I'll let Alex talk a little bit more, which is fine with me. Oh, it sounds normal now. Thank you, Natalie. Natalie says we sound good. Okay, good. Yay! I fixed. I fixed the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, <All right>. <laughs> um, so yeah I mean you know I, I, I can't wait I'm hoping you know we can uh, get in touch why with him and, and, actually and, and everything else why don't you call him and see if he responds I, I, I could do that well I've been I've been trying I'm um, um, reaching him through Skype uh, but we can try and we can get him on the phone um, I'll try that again and Let's because see. does he always t tells me that he takes naps? Yes. <laughs> he loves yes. his nap. <laughs> that is true. That's what he said. That's what he said too. He's like, I I'm glad because he, you know, for him it's it's five o'clock there. So yeah, he said, well, I was all right because at two two o'clock I take my nap. So. <laughs> I know him correctly because I've gotten to know him throughout the years now. So let's see. Let's see if I can get him on the phone. I'm gonna put it on speaker too, so. Okay. 
It's ringing. It's always a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> but it keeps ringing. So maybe he's taking a really long nap. The call has been forwarded to an automated yep, voice his messaging voice system. <laughs> okay. Seven, zero, seven, ah. five, three, five, six. Don't give his number out. <laughs> yep, no, I didn't. That's why I shut it off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll we'll, we'll just go. Bad. We'll go on with the show. I mean, we got to do. You know what we got to do. Um, the show goes on. The show goes on. We are back on 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 YouTube and you know and and Spreaker live. Uh, okay. Facebook was you know was that. So every everything is running good. We're all we're all good on that. Uh, so I want I want to say that uh, as we are in phase two, we are heading towards phase three by the 22nd. I think, you know, for summer solstice will be throughout phase three here in New York city. And I will have, uh, my dear friend, Lady Rhea. She wants to get all dolled up. She's, she's going to be the first one <laughs> in the broth at, at the first, at her, at her salon. For her nails and eyebrows and hair and everything, because she's telling me her hair is like pulled up in a ponytail and a bun, and, and like <laughs> you never had it. You know, Lady Rhea has always been uh, coiffed, so uh, she's gonna be the first. And as you see, I have my hair is longer, and I just slick it back. And yeah, well, look at you know our our last episode. You know, I had that the quarantine look. You know, yeah. Uh, yep, yep, and it's all gone. I've been g getting out today. I had to go pick up my car, and you, you know, so nice. yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, so you know, think, it, it, it's I'm happening. I plan to have Lady Rhea on soon because this way we could um, uh, make make the uh, parade. Um, you know, talk about the parade and talk about which fest USA, uh, especially when she's on. And I think we should do that uh, soon. When I maybe for July, yeah, I'll be yeah. to have her on, and this way would commemorate. It will start though off uh, the uh, the informative facts of, of the parade and how she started the parade and, and how uh, Star helped her get the permit and everything else. So yeah, that no, would, I think that'd be a, that'd so. Be great. I thought about Lady Rhea. I thought about. Um, Reverend Don Lewis, that it's his birthday today. Happy birthday, yes, Reverend. Yes, happy Dr. birthday. And we should have him on as well. He's a great elder um, that I've known for so many years. And um, and Selena Fox. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we we got a lot, we got a lot of people, you know, kind of uh, lined up in in the in the drawers of uh, this old witch. So. Um, you know, we um, we do have a lot of people lined up, and I, and I would like to, like in July, really focus on you know maybe bringing in some of those guests that are are going to be uh, at Witchfest. You know, uh, other than ourselves, because we are there too. Um, well, you know, but La Lady Rhea and you know, a star is probably way too busy to come on, but maybe we can catch her after. Um, <laughs> Natalie Natalie Cedric says not Selena too. <laughs> Well, but, Selena, Selena, that's another that's another personality I've I've uh, interacted with uh, long ago, and just recently because I was um, interviewed by the producer of the uh, of a documentary that's being being in the works for uh, Herman Slade and Ed, Eddie Bazinski for the Magical Child. So this. Um, this documentary and she got wind of it and she reached out to me uh, letting me know that she had old footage of Herman um, that she owns and she has uh, a lot of uh, memorabilia from the magical child that she could actually share with the with this producer mm -hmm. uh, who lives in Louisiana and I, and I was like oh, absolutely Selena I'll, I'll get you in touch with him and, and that's I made that possible so hopefully that's gonna be a great documentary I'm looking forward to and and also uh, having Selena on on board here with yes, this old yes yeah no that it, that would be it would be great you know it, that's um, she's another one you know she's been around you know for uh, you know a long time and oh, has so my, much knowledge to share 
Very, very much. See, she's one of the pioneers. I've known her. Yes. I've known of her through a documentary. I think it was an occult sort of documentary, and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I got to know her. And she was one of the first uh, personalities that were was responsible for doing um, Mother Earth Day or, mm -hmm. or uh, Earth Day. Earth right. Day. Right. In Wisconsin, she was the, the what was responsible with other uh, politicians that got to commemorate the first Earth Day back in 1971, I believe. So she's an amazing lady, Reverend Fox. Yes, so yes. We have her. Yeah, I, I got I got to meet and, and chat with her at um, South Jersey P Pagan Pride. Uh, she was the mm -hmm. guest speaker for that. Uh, that was, which was also my set, my first set of Jersey Pagan Pride, going as a patron. Um, and then the year after that, you know, um, I've gone every year since. And I, I vend, I do readings, and I usually do a class. Um, uh, you know, I'm really connected. The, the, the Philadelphia Pagan Pride and the South Jersey Pagan Pride, they're like sister prides because they're so close to each other. And mo a lot of the same people go to the same uh, same ones. And I'm on the board for Philadelphia Pagan Pride. So it, it, the connections, you know, are there. So, But that was the last time that I had seen her. And this was three, four, maybe even five years ago. You know, after a while, they start to blend together. <laughs> yeah, no, that I've... You know, Selena Fox is definitely an elder that total reverence. You know, I'm really happy to start. You know, I'm starting to see her more hitting the social media. Um, she did, you know, and she's she doing she's doing all these her. new things, and it's great to bring her back into the community, especially for you know all, all these millennials that you know they only deal with the internet and they only deal with with. Um, you know the interactions on social media. Um, I know why you're laughing, but uh, <laughs> the um, you know the, the, those millennial witches. That's all they know is, is that social media. Um, you know, and I'm really glad to see that an elder is is using that medium now to bring forth and bring themselves back that is into the community. Forced to be reckoned with, uh, elders Selena Fox, uh, you know Budapest, uh, Lori Cabot. Lady Rhea, you know these are these are great elders. Um, Silver Wolf, right? The, mm -hmm. uh, yes, Silver Wolf. Yep, yeah. But but you, they're, they're all starting to you know to, to utilize social media. Even you know Lori Cabot too. She uh, she comes on every week now. So oh, you know this, the despite the pandemic, of... it's almost helped the community kind of go back to those roots and being able to have she, access to that. Yeah. She just did Witchcraft 1. She taught Witchcraft 1 uh, remotely, and it it was su so successful. She had about, I think about 39 students and from all over the world, and it was such a successful first-degree class that uh, I think she's going to love it. I think she's going to like it better to do it remotely from her Right, home. right, yeah. Well, yeah that, that's, go to the shop and teach. And, yeah, yeah. You know, that, that, I've been saying that from the beginning that, that that's kind of the, the silver lining of all of this, you know, pandemic is that, you know, the community is now finding new ways to incorporate technology where I think over the last, you know, couple of years you have a lot of people who shunned technology when it came to spirituality that they couldn't mix. Um, and uh, I'm starting to see a, a you know a change in that, which is which is great, and it reaches a whole new you know generation as well because you know those millennials they're in front of their computer all the time. Um, oh, I know. You know, but I so, remember I, I, can, I can remember as a child um, way back when the 70s, 80s when you can need even have a you know, transistor radio or or the television on or anything like you had to shut everything off. So the energy would be the coven own energy. It would be mm -hmm. uh, um, pure pure energy within right. within uh, the coven. Um, so that's hence you know midnight and uh, it was uh, solace. Mm -hmm. uh, time of of the uh, of of the stages of the moon and so forth. So, yes, I understand 
technology that, that they, we we shunned away from the radio. We shunned mm -hmm, away mm -hmm. from from the TV. Let's say. Yep. Yep. Um, so so that was the now of course it, it, we have brought magic through technology. Yes. Yep. Where technology has brought magic to us as well. Yes. Yeah. 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 It, it's um, it, but even in, even a couple of years ago, you know, when I ran the group in. Um, in Pennsylvania, you know, we, there was a couple of people who, you know, kind of didn't want to have, you know, uh, the phone within the circle or a computer within the circle playing music, radio, things like that because of this. And, you know, I tried to explain it, and you know, I saw things differently, and I tried to explain it that, you know, even though they're man-made you know, it's not, they're not all, it's not natural, you know, it's not a natural thing, you can't go out and find a telephone in the woods. If you do, I'm sure it's, you know, stolen. But, <laughs> but it, you kind of have to think that even if it's man-made, it still contains matter, it, it's still matter, it's still molecules, it's still everything, it is, you know, and yes, everything it is still matter, is part of the all. It's part of our reality. Yes, yeah. It's part of this plane of existence and it's our reality and it's it's our own time and space and evolution so it's something we have to embrace it and it's part of that magic evolution right yeah no i, I agree and so I, so it's something that that nevertheless it's the here with us yes yeah yeah um you know and i'm sure you know the the, the witches of old you know, they they might have been against certain things too. You know, uh, you know, uh, an axe or, or you know some kind uh, of other implement. You know, they they could have been against that too. You know, we grow, <laughs> they grow, example. everything grows. So <laughs> I have an example. <laughs> Laurie Cabot was always um, she shied away from having photography during ritual, having you know um, during during circle and so forth. But you know and. That could be. That could be Mr. Oberon. Nope, it is, <laughs> it is not. I usually turn my phone off, but I don't want to turn my phone off because you know, if he uh, if he does call and he's having maybe some technical issues, so I didn't, yeah. didn't you want never to turn know. that off. But my point is that now, an elder like Lori Cabot. Uh, she accepts technology, and she's doing, and she's guided by um, our own um, colleagues and 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 you know uh, friends of the temple. So this this is something, an opportunity for her to um, carry her message and her wisdom mm -hmm. across the world through technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we have to embrace it. You know, change is change. And you know, we, we have we're changing. We, we grow, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <This old witch. laughs> so, yeah, one of the things that um, I did want to bring up at some point, you know, I usually do like the announcements and things like that at, towards the end of the show. Um, it really is, uh, and it's kind of on the ver you know what we're talking about going virtual and, and you know especially with the pandemic and everything. But mm -hmm. there was a recent um, announcement. Uh, that we're both an event that we're both going to be at in October, and not mine, but we'll get to that too. Um, and that's the uh, Sleepy Hollows Festival of Witches. Um, it's back. It's on. So I'm really excited. I get to see people and I get to do things again. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Get the permit. Everything is fine. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, uh, Crystal Madison. You know, she announced it today. Which she's another guest I would love to have on in July. Uh, or uh, coming soon because we all want to get it in before Witch Fest too. Um, Love Crystal, but uh, she, you know her. She she runs the uh, Sleepy Hollows Festival of Witches, and uh, she announced it today that it's back on. It's she's going forward with it despite you know everything. And you know she's of course she's going to have all these. I have love uh, to teach at Sleepy Hollow. It's it's a great festival. It's uh, obviously the legend of Sleepy Hollow. A little city of Sleepy Hollow, upstate New York. It's great to travel. Great to be there with old friends. Um, looking forward to it. Yeah, me, me too. Me too. Um, that is the, the the week before mine. 
Um, mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll be going from one to the next, but yeah, um, to the next. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be going to yours. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, you know, but uh, I, I was really excited. You know that, that this year that uh, because last year, you know, she had asked me to to present, and I couldn't because I was running mine at the same time. Uh, you know, they overlap, so there was no way. There was no way. But so we worked it out this year that we can kind of feed off of each other because we know the same people. So it's really hard, you know, to to run two large festivals, um, sure. you know, with the same presenters and and uh, same vendors and, and things like that because we share a lot. Um, and uh, so this year, I, you know, I'll be uh, presenting and you're presenting. Um, yeah. You're doing well, the uh, I'm count. Be the, per, you the, know, successful. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, not all the details are out yet from what I know um, just because you know there's a lot of things to work out with the hotels and you know and all, all the uh, the venues and things like that but she's going forward with it um, which is great I'm so excited to to get out and be able to, to go back to uh, go back to that um, right. yeah. so I think I October I wonder if we have to wear a mask uh, most likely, I would assume because it's you know it's it, it is New York and you guys are a lot you know you're hit harder than, than anybody else in the country, uh, so I'm sure there's going to be a lot of things in place you know. But even at mine, you know, we're like I said, we're opening up this week um, pretty much full, and um, you know I'm still you know I, my event's still on, and um, you know I still have to work things out with the resort, but I'm still going to have the mass thing. I'm still going to be doing this. I gotta, I'm going to take precautions. I want to keep the community safe. You know that's my biggest thing. Um, but I'm still going forward with it. Uh, for mine, I, I don't know what uh, the dates are. She hasn't truly announced the dates, but I know it's probably the week before mine. But I don't want to stay for sure and put really put it out there. You know, mine is the 23rd to the 25th. Everything still looks good on that. Um, uh, my special guest is Christopher Penzak, one of our guests from two weeks ago, uh, four weeks ago. Um, you know, as well as yourself with Lady Rhea. Um, so, you know, I think it's going to be, I think October is going to be our month, as usual. <laughs> it's going to be our month. Uh, <laughs> oh, our month, yes. You know, so, you know, it, it's a new year. It's the Witch's New Year. So we'll start it off with a big bang, you know, being able to, uh, you know, get together and party and shop and, you know, do all the amazing things um, true, true. together, you know, and celebrate. Oh, um, and, uh, put another call in for Oberon. Yes, I will do that. He must have fallen asleep. He must have fallen asleep. <laughs> yep, yeah, still saying that he is unavailable. He must okay. be sleeping. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, if we you know, if we don't have him you know, don't have him if he sleeps through the day, you know, I can always give him a call. Maybe we could do oh. another special episode in between. See if Natalie Sedgwick is there. Uh, she hasn't written. We haven't gotten any uh, any new. Her last one was. Uh, she's very excited for the documentary, um, and she has star on tomorrow. But uh, Natalie, if you're there, um, we can uh, give you a call and uh, have you join in and join in some of the fun. Um, we shall see. Let's see if the uh, let me refresh that chat. Maybe it's. Uh, a little stuck. Oh, she is here. Yep, I just refreshed it, but I saw her say I am. Uh, if you're if you're interested in, uh, just uh, let's see. Tell her that this is a great opportunity for me to chat with her. Yeah, there you go. We because just turned the show around. Me. Completely she turned the show around. She wanted to talk, and I, I was <laughs> so busy. I'm just gonna wait for the chat to, to refresh. I refresh the chat the the chat oh, box. Okay. So I'll wait, wait until she answers. But yeah, if she wants to go on, I'll. Um, yeah, uh, do you have? Her. Is she in your contacts? Um, I have her in my contacts. Um, oh wait, I, would, I, yeah, then yeah. I won't be able to put her on on screen. We'd we'd be able to hear her, but I'll be able to put her on screen. But if How you want, I, would I have to call her? Um, yeah, at I least here. If I if I can I've if done, I can I've done several podcasts with her. 
for her show. Oh uh, no, I I got her. I have her actually in my contacts. So oh, I guess that's okay. good. yeah. So if she says yes, um, that will uh, we'll get that going because I have my Skype hooked up with uh, Facebook and everything. So. Um, that's why she would love to not in a state to be seen uh, we just turn your your video off uh, we could we could definitely just you know patch you in on on vocal on Skype if that's okay yeah. I'll call you yeah. um, but yeah she would love to she's not in a state to be seen right now <laughs> hey it, it's still quarantine I'm sure <laughs> so who has <laughs> She has a rollers and are, are a little uh, <laughs> <laughs> handkerchief let me, on. Let me see if I can get her in. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Just make sure that she's got the right thing. And when she answers me back, I will give her a call. Hello there. And Alex is back. Mm -hmm. That works. All right, she says that works. So let's see. Let's see if I can get her. Get her in. I believe that's her. Oh. Missing you too. <laughs> I just I got a me I just got a message from Sorita Diaz. Ah yes, I would love to have her on. Oh my god, I would have so many questions. So many make questions. Make up. Make up. We could have her on. All right. Let me. Yeah, that would that would be great. And. <laughs> uh, uh, let me go back to my get rid of get rid of this. Go back to the video, and we'll get her in. Oh, we made it all. It made it all kinds of interesting. <laughs> we start with one way, and we end up having a lot more. Let's see. Why? Why is she not coming up this way? Oh, there she is. All right. Let's see. We'll add her in. Sure. I'm calling Avalon. I'm we're calling. Gonna, we're gonna have everybody. I don't. She. We would have to keep her uh, also on vocal because I don't have. I don't have that patched in for video for, for that. And I can I be calling on mine? Is it possible? I don't know. I don't know if it'll go through. I, I'm not really sure. Okay. So it it's calling call, Natalie. I'm calling Sorita from uh, Glastonbury. Does she know we're live? <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess it didn't go through. Call, um, because I'm on my phone. See if you could call Sorita. He's available on Sorita DSC. I can for some reason I can't add Natalie either. Right? That is strange. I mean, she's in she's in my contacts and she doesn't want her. Uh, try to add her again. Do, 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 do. It is calling her. And she answered. She answered my text. Let me see. Let's see. She's active, but she's not calling. Okay. 
quite interesting. I don't know why. Should I call you? Uh, yeah, you could. That should work too. Um, but I have to try to find a way of adding you into the group. She asked if I should call me, but I don't know if that's going to set up a separate uh, thing because we work in, um, you know, our me and you t chatting is a is is one group. Um, and for some reason, she doesn't want to call. Answering this call, we'll place the current call on hold. Or you can merge the calls. All right, yes, we can merge the calls. Let's see, merge the call. Let's see. Natalie, are you there? I'm here. Oh, and, and you're on video. What happened? I thought you were. I am. <laughs> you're going to get the, you're going to get the, uh, Dolly in the background there. Oh, all right, all right. Well, no, I can. I, the video's not on on for the live, so we can see oh, you, okay. but but the but the the, the listeners can't. They can they can hear you though. Okay, that worked. Natalie, hey, I thought Natalie was so excited to know that we were we had uh, Obronzel, but I guess I, he's I was like, I was just thinking about asking him because he just he friended me on Facebook and I thought, man. It'd be so awesome. Like, wouldn't that be gangbusters to get Oberon Zell on my podcast? And then yeah. <laughs> I, I was to be out here, I was like, so ragged, ragged. Sending that thought out into the universe. I shouldn't have. No, he is amazing. He's an amazing man. Yeah, he's, he's been. Yeah. Wizard, uh, a long time. Sure. Very influential oh. in the community, though. He's a wonderful man. So I can still get them on. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> well, you know, not... we, we might actually have a fourth <laughs> four compartment there. Uh, <laughs> and that works. And have, and have him there. I and appreciate you're Natalie. So, Natalie, I know that you've been trying to get in touch with me, but I've been so busy. I'm so sorry. I know. I figured as you went back to work and everything picked up, oh, and you know, things have been open and working here, too. So, it's, you know, it's been stupidly busy. So, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the time that I was taking care of my mom, I was so grateful that I had the time to do your shows. I uh, was, too. <laughs> they, were, they were fun. They were really great and informative. I were, actually, you brought out the teacher in me. And well, I, was I, I think the one, we, the, for, um, the one we did for the YouTube channel, particular. I mean, they both. I enjoyed both of them, but really, the one that you did with the African background really, I think, was timely yes. and very informative. It, it was very good. Actually, remember so much. Um, and and that, and and thanks to you because that is going to be the uh, catalyst for me to try to bring out my memoirs because I'm I'm today I had a talk a two hour talk which was wonderful conference call with my editor and I was able to get a lot of input and find comb the the you know, the proofread, the, um, the manuscript. So we, we've gotten a lot of work. So I'm, Good. I'm incorporating thorough work in the book because the book consists of, um, even Christian mysticism. So I'm, I'm incorporating a lot of the, the teachings and experiences that I've had throughout life. And uh, obviously the African diaspora. So, so okay. I, I include uh, Palo Mayombi is unbelievable. I was able to recollect on the teachings and the and the storytelling of my godfather. So that was wonderful for me to uh, reminisce and and to fine tune on words, to put them in words in my own language. Well, I'm it's looking exciting. forward to the book. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it is. <laughs> is it, it is exciting. I, I, I even, you know, the acknowledgments of um, so many people, but especially Judica Isles, who was the initial torch, you know, that, that made me 
say, you know, why not? And of course, Lady Rhea, publishing two books for Lady Rhea and writing for them, contributing was my first moment in literary work. So I, you know, that w was the, 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 the first push for me to, um, to actually start this, to start this, uh, this work of, of um, writing. So, so I, I, I enjoy that with you. <laughs> it is a labor of love, no it's question. It's a labor of love, exactly. <laughs> So, Natalie, I have uh, one of our listeners uh, asking what your podcast is, which is your ah, podcast. It is called The Purple Mystic, Podcast for the Modern Witch, and it is available on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spotify, and Podbean. Oh, this listener is all the way from Mexico and says greetings from Mexico, so ah, you know, you'll have another Mexico. listener from Mexico. I'm just saying that there is a, there's this wonderful series on Netflix called the house this house of flowers and it's uh, it's a Mexican uh, program uh, you know a series that is just wonderful with an old-time actress called Veronica Veronica Castro and she's phenomenal awesome awesome so, I hope I, I wonder what they say <laughs> uh, La Casa de la Flores. Yeah, they just wrote it back, so I guess they they, they must watch it. So <laughs> yeah, they must they must add it first, then us. Yeah, yeah. La Casa de la Flores con Veronica Castro. So, uh, I, you know, I, I, at this point, uh, I, thank you, Natalie, for coming on and keeping us, uh, yes, uh, keeping us going, you know, while I while Auburn takes his nap. <laughs> I get to see Natalie. Natalie, you are just a bundle of energy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, especially when we chat, when we're on, you know, we're chatting, and and uh, you have some time for yourself, and we're getting to actually, uh, you know, touch base and, and catch up. Yeah, I, I I was like a little fangirl. I was I think I even made a comment about how I was trying not to be all Irishy eyed about it, but because <laughs> I was. You know, smiling so hard you couldn't even see my eyes. It's just like slit. And <laughs> my husband's like, "Are you okay in there?" Uh, you sound a little excited. I was like, "I'm on the top of the ocean." <laughs> 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 oh, that's so sweet. Now you get to see me live on this. I episode. know. I love it. I've been enjoying the podcast. It's been a lot of fun. You guys have a really good interview. Thank you. It's fun to listen in. And I Thank get you. Some tips. Well, this is this is Eddie Massey's baby, this old witch, and and I'm happy to just um, be there for him for support. Yeah, no, I, you know when uh, I have was uh, in the beginnings, the infancy of it, you know, I was talking with Alex. I don't even know what we were talking about, and I had mentioned, you know, that uh, I was putting together this thing. He was like, "I'd love to do that," and that was it. You know, the the. Uh, uh, it, it just well, it just worked out, and and I think the the concept really fell into it, you know, because I really you know the, I had the idea of bringing you know the 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 country witch and the city witch together, and, yeah. and because you know having that you know and no and, the, and male witch it, it just worked out. yes and it, you know it's it's, yeah. it's even better because we get to open it up to the you know the male witch and you know and and not only that you know bringing in. Um, you know the gay community as well, but you know, and so there's a lot you know that 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 the show really um, brings together that really wasn't in the four. You know, it, it it wasn't in my head at the time, and it just you know it just birthed in, and it's been growing um, quite rapidly. You know, uh, we're only on our fifth episode, and um, you know, <laughs> even today, Alex goes. Ah, I looked at the numbers today. You, know, you were looking at the numbers on Facebook. You're like, oh, we have so many likes. You know? <laughs> like, I, he made the admin of the of the on um, the one on Facebook, right? I think it is. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And all of a sudden, I see like, 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 you know, these numbers, and I'm like, wow, you know. And I I thought 
you know, we have the usual friends, our, our uh, acquaintances that knows us, but it's grown. Yeah, well, yeah, and, and both quickly, of you quickly. are influencers in the community at this point, you know, well <coughs> past being elders in your own right. So it stands to reason that people would be drawn to the energy that the two of you produce, uh, being as active as you are in bringing the community out to the remainder of the community mm -hmm. so. yeah, we, we try we try that's um if not i would be solitary i would be just myself but uh it, it is a calling of the goddess and, and of the old religion that i'm here being a public uh you know witch and practitioner and clergy for for everyone as a servant yeah. Everyone. I think that's a good topic to talk about, too, because in a lot of the initiatory traditions, you have the concept of silence, of keeping the secrets of the community. Mm. So how do you balance the, the edict of keeping the silence with being public in the community? For me, it's very easy because there's just certain things you don't divulge, but you can certainly share about your practice and spiritual beliefs without divulging things. So, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people have asked about that as kind of a dichotomous situation, but I don't think it is. I think the concept is separate from and related strictly to the initiatory we, right you're in. Right. History at all. You have General Gardner. He was out. He was mm -hmm. out and mm -hmm. he did mm -hmm. documentaries and he did shows and he was a public witch. You had civil leaders. Laurie Cabot. Yeah. Yeah. You I know, mean, Cabot's been doing interviews the, since the 1980s. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm living proof of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, in a way, I am too, because the first time I ever saw her was on Oprah Winfrey when she was talking yes. about um, uh, witches and witchcraft. Which I'd always, I'd always been drawn to it, and much to my mother's chagrin. But that just solidified it even more. So, you know, there yeah. it is. But but yeah. that doesn't mean you're giving away secrets from your particular tradition either. No. It's no. Information no. that isn't no. spoken about in the public forum, and that's why I have to tell people all the time. Is, you know, yeah, yeah that, it, that, that it's okay, you know. Well, you know, it, the gatekeeping thing, that's a big hot topic right now, and, oh. you know, 90% 90, 90 of it, you know, I see it all the time, and, you know, there are certain things that I think, um, even as a solitary practitioner, you know, I think people... You know, I see it on Facebook, people sharing their altars and people sharing their spell work and people sharing this. Those are the things that you don't share, you know, right. and, and because that just opens you up to, to, you know, to possibilities of other people causing harm and, and doing, you know, um, you never know. There's, there's crazy people out there. That, that That's all i got to say. Well, there's well, crazy know, people out there. You know, there. to make an announcement, but to share, my, you know, when, when you do your own ritual and everything, it's private for me. It's private, mm -hmm. and if you're sharing it, it severs uh, what you're doing, uh, you know, because you're putting it out there, you know, mm -hmm. it's not really uh, wholesome, and you have okay. to contain it within your own, you know, sacred circle. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's something you look with time, mm -hmm. you know, because when I was newly practicing openly, Mm -hmm. I saw everybody else's altars, and I was like, "Oh well, look, I can do that too." Isn't mine nice? You know, it it was it was a pride kind of issue. Yes, it's but it's I learned later to keep to myself because of that exact reason, Eddie. That people don't always have good intentions. Not everybody that's on your Facebook is your friend. <laughs> <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with sharing. You know, sharing your there's altar here and there. You know, I have I have like. 25 different altars so it doesn't matter what I said but my working altar where I'm having stuff you know and I'm doing clients work I'm doing you know my own personal spell work I don't share mm -hmm. that that doesn't Absolutely. go out you know that doesn't go out um, you know I, even at the store you know if I have um, you know I have I have an altar when you walk in um, you know the, the I have an ancestor altar there and I also have uh, an altar dedicated to Hecate at the store and you know, if there's spell work, I don't mind sharing it. And we we're doing uh, a, a group. You know, I have a lot of times for the you know a lot of the holidays and stuff. I'll have you know people come in or um, just special gatherings at the store. Um, 
you know, I don't mind having that out because I trust that community. That's my my small knit community. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't I don't share that altar if there's personal stuff on there that from that ritual or if there's uh, things on there. It's just not. I, I don't think it's a place to put it. You know. To, to share out with the world, you know, you're, there's one thing about putting your magic out to the universe, and there's one thing of sharing your your in yourself, your inside self, your spiritual self, with people you don't know, I'm, like I'm in a group. My my you know. backdrop is my old. Right, but that's that I, that. But do you don't? Yes, I, I don't mind sharing. I, I have altars have like it. that I'm too. Not, I'm not doing ritual. Right. And when right. when I you, did. I think I, uh, the photographer and videographer for uh, Witches of New York, when she filmed me for the first full mm-hmm. moon, um, that was mock. That was actually, mm-hmm. she mm-hmm. took bits and pieces and that was mock, you know. And so I did the ritual. She just actually created the video itself by, by bits and pieces. So it was not the full ritual itself. And I have to say, that now, oh, it's your clock, Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma, we have one hour left. <laughs> Grandma, <We> have... <laughs> so, no, when when I when I, you know, when I was actually doing the the there was at a penumbral um, eclipse and the wolf moon, and the wolf came to me as a premonition, again, after. I returned back to the craft, and, and I went towards the Cabot tradition, or you know, the academy of, of, of uh, the Cabot uh, witchcraft. So I remember that in 2020, this the wolf was seeking refuge. Now I understand everything. Now I understand the 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 um, that uh, omen. Or, or premonition that I had with the wolf seeking refuge mm-hmm. within me, and it was, uh, to, you know, uh, out in in the elements. There, uh, what what has transpired with 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 COVID nineteen, with the pandemic, with the world situation today that we're going through in twenty twenty. Now it comes to the light why the wolf, as a totem spirit guide was showing its refuge, it's showing its uh, self uh, exposed to the elements, showing itself that it's been beaten and um, was seeking refuge. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. now I understand why that premonition I had in 2020. Right. Well, you know, and there's a lot, wolf is a very complicated, you know, a lot of people uh, don't realize that, you know, one of the things that I was taught, um, uh, Natalie, if you don't know, I, I um, I grew up, I'm part uh, Pecani uh, indigenous tribe, uh, which is Montana, and I grew up on the reservation, um, pretty much grew up on the reservation, I would go back back and forth. Um, And, you know, part of the teachings that we have is that Wolf never really technically 100% fully sits with anyone. Um, they tend, uh, Wolf tends to come when you're going through spiritual growth and you're going through spiritual changes. Um, so it, 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 you know, I see it all the time, and I, I I'm so glad I'm, I'm able to keep my mouth shut, you know, especially in groups. Oh, you know, my, 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 my spirit island is wolf. My spirit, ever, if that was the case, everybody would be wolf that was involved with witchcraft, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and the thing is, is I'm, I'm not denying that the wolf came to that person, you know. Um, I don't deny that. I don't deny anyone of, of that if they had an encounter with uh, a spiritual animal or, or any other spiritual being. It's just a lot of times wolf is one that comes when you're th- going through a growth period um, or just getting involved in, in, in some kind of spiritual uh, path. They tend to come in because they are the leader. You know, they're the leader of the pack. They lead you along the way. They lead you to your destination or they lead you to your real spirit animal. Um, you know, it's not to say that, you know, the, the, uh, there's not like, you know, 1% of the people that say that they're, they're uh, spirit animals. Well, it does happen. You know, I'm not going to say that it doesn't. Um, well, I'm, you know, I'm one of them because the wolf has been very predominant throughout my whole life. And and, 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 right, and, and, and that's the case. 
you know, but look at look at what you do. You know, there's there's a lot involved. You know, in, in that from from my end, um, and the teachings that I've learned. Um, but look at what you do too. You're a leader. You know, so um, and and wolf is what you know. There, there, there's there's multiple types of wolves. Maybe yours is not the typical timber wolf. You know, maybe it's um, you know a, an arctic wolf. You know, maybe there's more to it than that. Um, and that that requires a lot of you know. Um, I should have spoken uh, to you about journeying. You. It's you. I was trying to find to analyze and dissect this premonition I had in 2020 because in 2009 I had the wolf but it was more of the spiritual growth it came to me as a mm -hmm. pop mm -hmm. and then it metamorphosized itself into an adult and it guided me through the woods like a, a guide would it led yes me. And, and that's and that's what that, that's what they are you know that's what that's that's, that's the what they spiritual are spiritual work that I was returning I was you know I just passed my boards. I was. I wanted to uh, re-energize my spiritual journey, and I was going to Salem, Massachusetts. I was re-encountered. You know, re-encountered. Uh, we re-encountered with Lori Cabot. Um, I was taking her courses and so forth. So that was that was the whole. I understood why the wolf presented itself. Mm -hmm. But now right. in 2020, when I saw it tattered and and. Uh, from the elements, and it seeks refuge, and it was, it was not in a good space, place. Mm -hmm. uh, it it looked like it needed my attention, and now I understand with 2020 and what has happened. Now I understand what the wolf was telling me from that premonition. Mm -hmm. And, and you I, know, you you can I ask, you, you can I even you it. Can I, I couldn't uh, analyze it correctly. Right, I, you know, and, um, and, and, you know, one of the things is, too, you know, the best things to do um, in cases like that is is really go back and connect with Wolf. Spend some time with Wolf. Find mm -hmm. out. You know, ask. You know, they, the animals talk, you know. Um, ask, you know, what, what, what's going on? What does this mean? What You know, it's okay to ask our, our guides. You know, it's okay to ask, like, what does this mean? Can you can you explain that to me? Because I don't understand, you know. Um Oh, and you, you kind of get a little bit better, better understanding of it. Now that you you're a little bit you're, you you might enlighten me on this, Eddie, is that the wolf was actually a half breed. It mm, was interesting. It was dog and wolf, and it was it was a dark, and it was like um, a, a, an animal that you would you would find totally abandoned you know you would salvage it you would take it to the vet mm -hmm. you would mm -hmm. groom it you would you know you would take it in that type it was that type of wolf hmm. um, it was a half breed and and on top of that it was a half breed and i couldn't understand why the half breed what's the message behind that and um, I, and ha having something ha it, but it, it could be it could be two parts of who you are you know um, you know, a, a struggling in, in, in spirituality and the could mundane. It say, could it um, represent the public versus the, the private side of your spirituality, that yes. duality that you're now yep. experiencing, sure. and the yep. need to get back to the vet, so to speak, like your return to Lori and the healing of of the two sides of yourself yep. in terms of your spirituality? Yep, definitely, definitely. And I was, I was also, going to kind of get into that and how they too represent. You know, you have the wolf, which is very majestic and, and spiritual, and, oh, and a dog is a dog. You know, <laughs> a dog is a dog. And look who's calling! <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick this up. So I'm going to mute my mic. Yes. Can you hear me, Natalie? Can you hear me, Natalie? I can hear you. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Oh, good. So we could talk. Yeah, we can talk. <laughs> it's uh, nice to see you, my it's own. It's so good to see you. I'm glad that you've gotten back to work. How's your mom? My mom is well. Thank the Lord and lady. She is good. I, you know, away from harm's way. So. Good. Good. It's so good he is... Okay. Awake and ready. <laughs> oh, he's awake and ready. He's so awake and ready. 
Yep, he's a week already. Yeah. I'm going to see if we can get uh, all of us in, because that would oh, be you really fun. I bow out now, so you can have no, 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 no. I'm going to see if we can get us all in. I've never been down before on this old witch having two guests. So let, let's see if this can be done. Um, Madam I'm... Sedgwick from Dallas, Texas. <laughs> let's see. Someone's with Big D. <laughs> Natalie, we're gonna we Lady Rhea and I are coming to Dallas. Yes, yes, yes. We're gonna come to Dallas. I heard. I just heard from one of my the Welsh high priestesses from Dallas, and she was telling me that there was an elder that passed away, and she got all of her um, book of shadows, and she was so excited. Oh, and yeah. one of them was an old Welsh book, old Welsh. You know, uh, Book of Shadows, and she was telling me that she's so excited and she wants to oh, share wow. that with me. And then she said that she would definitely she'll have us back. And so I told her, you know, uh, in Dallas, I think that has that shop that Lady Rhea was going to teach at. Right. Got the name of it, but um, we'll be back. Yeah, that was uh, um, Cat Fields and uh, Kevin. Okay. Kevin. I think his last name is. They have a shop there because there's several. And in fact, I had been concerned because I usually go to one that's in Fort Worth, and I was afraid they hadn't made it through the pandemic. But they're they are the oldest metaphysical shop. Oh, they in the are world. the oldest. They're, um, they've been in business for over twenty something years. I think 1984 is when they opened. And uh, oh, okay. James and his partner there are a delight. I I, I just love. And that's in Fort Worth. And, that's in Fort Worth. It's called the Enchanted Forest. I cannot remember the name of Kevin's shop, um, but Kat's the one that was setting up all the stuff, so he referred me to her when I was trying to get the details. But I will tell Patsy that will make Did I? I hope I didn't lose you guys. No, I'm here. Nope, nope, All right. I'm here. All right, good, good. Uh, yeah, here. <laughs> yeah, every, yeah. I guess everybody is still here. I guess maybe I, I might have lost myself from 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 the feed for a second trying to call uh, Oberon. Um, it still seems to be not working. Um, I've called him twice on Skype. He said he's sitting there waiting. So I don't know. You know, I call him on his phone. And then, you know, let him know that you're trying to reach him. Because he's not, he might not be technically savvy. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here we go. I got him. He just called me. He just called me. So he is connected. Oh, oh we're on. Did you make it? All right. <laughs> Hello. All right, we have Natalie Sedwick with us too, so we, we had to fill some time. So she 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 popped in. Natalie Sedwick from Dallas, Texas. Okay, hi Natalie. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Terrific. So excited! It's oh so my gosh, I feel like I'm like in an exclusive club. I'm like, <laughs> trying not to fan girl here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Honestly, you know, you guys. Anyway, um, so, okay, here we are. Yes, yeah, yes, we are. yes, we're back excited. I'm going to go get your feed up on the uh, on the screen here so that uh, we can all see you. Okay. There we go. Which is, there we go. So, we got you on the screen. So, how have you been? Well, I've been great. I've, I've been really busy moving uh, across the country, so I'm now settled in at my new home um, near Seattle, Washington area. Wow, very nice. Yep. Beautiful area. Very nice. Oh, wonderful. I, I missed the opportunity to meet you, Obron, when um, a Gypsy Ravish had you in Salem. Yeah, I was there for several months. Yes. Sorry, too, that we didn't connect. Absolutely, it's it's uh, it's quite the task for me to uh, leave New York and go into Salem. When I when I do, it's uh, certain occasions, but we will we will finally meet one day. And I want to and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart because when I uh, was seeking 
uh, elders to for acknowledgments. The blurb on on Lady Ria's book. You were the first one to respond, and I and I want to thank you, commend you on on you know being such a um, a wonderful person and and loving person that you are. Well, thank you very much. That's very kind of you to say that. <laughs> that um, and Lady Ria sends her regards and and her uh, thanks as well. All right, terrific. Well. Um, these days, uh, travel is kind of odd, and I have no idea when I'm going to be back on the East Coast again. But, um, well, actually, that's not entirely true. I'm going to be doing a, um, a video gig out in New Jersey at the end of this month, but it's a really tightly constrained little situation there. Oh, wow. Okay. But, and my friend Jimmy Clark, who's a musician, is creating a, uh, a series of uh, music videos for each of the tarot trumps and he recruited me early on to take the role of the hermit for some reason can't imagine why <laughs> <laughs> and after wrapping it all up with the world and they want everybody there who is part of it over the past you know couple of years so that should be a secret it will be released it's, it's, I've, I've seen a number of the videos and they're fabulous he's a great got a great band great musician and good videos so it'll be fun I'm from New Jersey. That's great. Yes, that's awesome. where he's got his studio and all. Wonderful. Right, right, right across the river from me. So. Oh, okay. yeah, right, right. Yeah, I'm in that. Pennsylvania. So. Well, I'm on the opposite side of the continent now from you guys, three thousand miles or something. Yes. So. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, and how uh, how are things out there with the uh, the aftermath of the pandemic? Well, uh, you know, we're this is a very quiet kind of little retreat center that isn't widely known, uh, apparently. Although I hope to change that now that I'm out here. I expect this to become significant on the map. But, but um, you know, everybody, everybody around here is being very cautious. New visitors have to wear masks and go through, uh, you know, the whole procedure and stuff. And we're being very careful. And so far, everybody's fine. It's, it's most, Most of the, the original residents, residents have left, left during, during this period, period for various, various reasons, reasons, mainly because they need, they need to go somewhere, somewhere they can they actually make a living. living. So, so that's, that's been a little bit challenging, challenging for, for folks. But they, but they invited, invited me to come, to come here actually, actually quite, quite a while ago. I just, just have only got, got here like, like a week ago. ago. But, but the, the invitation, invitation has been going, going on for a while. And it was a massive drive across the country with a great big huge truck and towing my car. It was quite an ordeal. But I had very, I had a very dear friend, Samina from, um, from Vegas, who came up to uh, help me drive, and so we had a great adventure together, the two of us. It was interesting we're driving across the country, seeing how everything is in the shutdown. You know, the, the gas stations, the restaurants, the motels. Everybody's made the accommodations. However, we managed to avoid completely the, the riots. The, the very beginning of it. We were actually out to dinner in Nashville, because that's where we started out, and we went to Puckett's. And just as we were finishing dinner and and uh, getting ready to go pay, a parade went by this on the street. We didn't really pay a whole lot of attention. We just thought, well, how about that? All these people are congregating, you know, which seemed odd. And then we uh, we left. <laughs> and right <laughs> after that, everything exploded. It was just huge, but we kind of missed it. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. All right, what I always wanted to tell you, you you've been a um, a wonderful, you know, practitioner and and icon throughout the years. That you've coined the phrase neo pagan. Yeah. And, you know, you are known for that. Um, I want to say that that this is something this is something that we use today. You know, uh, so freely. As, as neo-pagans, as, as uh, witches, and obviously... That's someone that's going to... Oh, I forgot to turn this off. <laughs> yeah, I've got to... Oh, I've got to stop it. Stop it. Go away. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's a, eh, it happens. We we no, we had some we some diffi Eddie. difficulties I mean, too. Exactly. Yeah, 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 we had some difficulties too. I was wondering where Eddie disappeared. I was wondering if he was doing some of that white glass. Yeah. 
Yeah, my video feed is there, but you can hear me though, right? Oh, oh you're good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, my, my, my video, I, I cut my video feed off uh, for a minute. We were getting a little high with the four callers, so I just wanted to cut that down a little bit. We're very good. I can hear you. They can hear me. Everybody can hear me. You just can't see me for a little oh, bit until we, until we bring down our uh, system a little bit. Okay. Ah, uh, gotcha. No, like I was saying that you, you coined the phrase neo-pagan, and, and this has now, we, t we actually use that freely today. Um, a lot of the new generation don't even know that you you were the one who led that uh, movement um, throughout the 60s and uh, obviously 70s. So uh, can you tell us a little about, you know, historical facts of back then? Well, sure. Um, <laughs> well, that's, uh, I'll be trying to condense it down and give you the abbreviated version. But, <laughs> Not that as, as a kid, when I was just a little kid starting out into the world, my first reading was children's versions of the Greek myths. And I got into mythology of all cultures and all peoples from something called the Childcraft books that had a volume called Myths and Legends of All Nations. And I was fascinated by that and totally immersed in that long before I was old enough to go off to Sunday school and learn the Christian, Judeo-Christian mythology. So, um, I always just felt an affinity for paganism, and, and I continued that all my life. And eventually, uh, well, when I was in high school, well, junior high school through high school in the 50s, Robert Heinlein was publishing a series of 12 juveniles that were sort of the Harry Potter books of that era, in that every, each year there would be a new volume, and with protagonists that were young and getting older each as the stories went on. And finally, the whole series concluded in 1961 when he had finished the, all of the juveniles and he was ready for the adult level, and the book came out, Stranger in a Strange Land. And it was immensely influential. It was just tremendous. And in it, it provided a formula for how to create a church uh, at the Church of All Worlds. It was, it was the one in the novel. And uh, we looked at that, we liked the ideas, and we said, well, um, let's do this. And the first act was on April 7th, 1962, with the with the water sharing of I and my the first person I'd ever met who was the same species as me, my friend Lance Christie. <laughs> and we met at the very first week in college and became fast friends for life. Our, our relationship throughout our entire, entire life, life was, was sort, sort of Kirk and Spock. Spock. He, he, he was, was the Spock. Spock. And uh, you can ride the rest of it from there. He died a few years ago of um, pancreatic cancer, but we were just closest bond forever. So we formed a little water brotherhood. We started finding more people, and we'd turn them onto the book and, and, and share water. By the time we graduated, we had about 100 people in this little water brotherhood thing. And after graduation, we started discussing what to do now with all of this. And the discussion was around, should we continue this kind of an underground secret society kind of a model, or should we take it public and go out, out into the world as the church of all worlds? So we decided to do both, and, and Lance was sort of selected to head up the, um, the other version, which was called ATL initially, A-T-L, which is an Aztec word for water, but it also has the esoteric meaning of the ancient lost homeland of our ancestors, so we thought that was cool. And, of course, the Church of All Worlds, where I was kind of uh, uh, assigned to take that one on because I had lots of theatrical bent and, and, you know, didn't mind getting up there in front of a bunch of people. So the opening salvo was um, on Labor Day weekend of 1967 when we had a public um, event. And uh, there I am with Tarquin. Okay, we're talking Church of All Worlds. It was a big thing. Nobody knew what it was. And so people asked. And somebody asked a fateful question. They said, what kind of a church is this? Are you one of these a Christian sect? Are you one of these Eastern groups? I mean, there were Scientologists and Moonies and, um, you know, Krishna consciousness and all kinds of, of religious foment going on in those days. And so I said, well, I guess you could say we're pagans. And that seems to have been the first time ever in all of recorded history that anybody claimed to actually be pagan. Uh, nobody else ever had. And people thought that was really cool. And, um, 
and helped us to go right into uh, filing for incorporation, which we did as the first pagan church of all worlds. And so we became the very first pagan church to uh, be legally incorporated all the way up through, you know, federal 501c3 and all that stuff. And, um, and, and so I started hearing about other groups here and there that were into cool stuff like this, most of them college students. There was a bunch of druids at Carleton College, you know, that Isaac Bonowitz was doing eventually. There was Fred Adams and his Ferraferia group in Burbank. And I would hear about these groups, and so I would, I would write to them, I'd contact them. Because at the same time that we got our incorporation, which was March 4th, 1968, um, we also took over a coffee house and opened up our first temple. And we started publishing a, a little newsletter called Green Egg which grew <laughs> over time. Yeah. The first issue was Ostara of 1968. And so I would send that. I'd hear some group and I'd say, hey, you guys look like pagans. We're pagans. Let's all be pagans together. La-di-da. And folks would say, yeah, pagans. That's what we are. That's really cool. So we got Greek and Egyptian and Mycenaean and Norse and Celtic and Druidic people coming together under this common umbrella pagans. So we decided to form a council, the first pagan council, which was the Council of Themis, goddess of harmony, whose statue was in every lawyer's office. And um, at that point, we thought that it would be a good idea to distinguish ourselves, because we didn't want people to think we were actually ancient, especially the Church of All Worlds, which was obviously derived from a science fiction novel, or inspired by it. So I said, well, we're, well, there's neo-pagans, we're neo-pagans, that's the new pagans, and then there's paleo-pagans that are the ancient pagans, and then Isaac Bonowitz threw in things like mesopagans, and, and it got to be lots of adjectives, and eventually, you know, these days we all just use the word pagans, which is cool. But neo-pagans served a very important, um, uh, you know, language ring in those days, because we didn't want to get in fights or arguments with with you know Native American or, or ancient Druids or, or or Hindus and stuff who are also pagan you know I mean they're all pagan everybody is pagan there yeah yeah there you that's go that's, 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 that's so much that's great of uh, history and it's not <laughs> <laughs> thank you that's, that's amazing I'm yes I've been always no, and can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Um, I remember uh, a couple of years back, I was approached by two ladies that still ran your um, Green, Green Egg publication, I think. I think. Um, your, 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 your magazine, magazine but it was more, more uh, you know, you know a, a podcast. podcast. I, I think, think they, they, they took, took it out. You know, you know the, the new the, the new millennial, millennial uh, um, publication as as the Green Egg um, online. So these la these ladies contacted me, and I was like, "Sure, Green Egg. I'm, I'm, is Silver on Cell running it?" And they were saying, "No, not really. We're actually running it for him." That was basically right. Yes, they were running it for for you and. And so that was my first interview when I actually became public. I, I never, I never, oh, I, I never thought that I, I was always solitary and, and I became public um, actually with Green A, with the first podcast that they, they did. So that was a, that was a, a wonderful um, experience that I had knowing that it was your, your Green A. It is. And it continues. The um, the next issue will be out very shortly for summer solstice, and it's uh, been electronic for the last 15 years. Uh, the podcast lasted for, I guess, quite a while, about 10 years maybe, that they yes. were doing. Uh, I don't think they're doing that anymore. Um, but, uh, you know, it continues. Green Egg continues. You know, okay. So you whatever to... I could be of service to you and your and Green Egg, let me know. Wonderful. You know, yes, and uh, and our and our dear friend David Moore. Oh yes, right. Yes, he's a wonderful man, a great brother. Good, good. Well, that's. I know wonderful. he's contributed a lot to Green Egg throughout yes. the years. Yep. Eddie, is there anything you would like to say? 
Um, no, you guys are doing well. You know I don't like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I do a radio show, but yet I don't like to talk. So, <laughs> no, you, just, you guys are doing well. well. You know, the, the, you're the host. I'm just the co-host. <laughs> you know, the the one thing that I was saying before when we had started um, uh, over on was that you know you're such an amazing storyteller. You know, uh, when you came out to Pennsylvania and I got to see you for the first time and meet you for the first time, you know, I was really taken back by the fact of, you know, you, you, you're kind of doing a class, but it was more storytelling. And I, I explained it, you know, to the listeners that you could, it, it could be about a, a leaf falling off a tree and you make it so magical and so majestic in your storytelling, you know, and that's what, that's what I love about you, you know, it, it you it's like traditional storytelling that the lessons are in the stories and that's what's you know that's what's amazing well, um, that's the beauty of it. yes yes well I guess Definitely. I got imprinted at that early age by reading these stories and I, I love stories we are beings of story story is ultimately the only thing that is immortal and that lasts forever you know the individuals the stories are about may pass from the earth but the stories may continue. We're still telling stories of Gilgamesh, you know, 5,000 years <laughs> yes, ago. Yes, yes. You know, we don't even know where the dude is buried, but we're still telling the story and passing it on and retelling and retelling how many versions of the stories of Heracles and Jason and the Golden Fleece and Yes, and, yes, and all yeah, the Arthur, and, all these yeah. stories. Brand, you know, up. brand new, brand new movies would come out. You know, they come out every year, but it's you know the, the basis uh, of those stories, the foundations of those stories, are those traditional stories just retold in modern times. You know, that yeah. that's that's what it is. Uh, Natalie did leave us, um, uh, at least on the call. She's still on our chat, uh, and she said, "Ah, the spirit of the bard." Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Well, so, it yeah. is, it is uh, it's passing it on. You know, the the phrase that we have on our um, when people die, we say, "What his remember lives," right. and that is true for so much. And I so, I, and early on in my life, when I started getting into all these stories and reading biographies as well, I decided, well, I want to live a life that that will pass down in stories that people will want to tell the stories. For down through history, and people will want to make movies about my life and write books about it. So I figured that's the kind of life I want to live, and I actually have lived that kind of life. So <laughs> it worked out very nicely. Yes, I, you know, and, uh, another you know fascinating thing about your your life is is moving. Um, you know, you, you've bounced you know bounced around the the, the, the U.S. Um, you know. And really get to tell your stories, you know, all throughout the United States. Um, you know, I think the last we spoke, you were in Tennessee um, a couple of years ago, um, and then California, and now you're up in, in Seattle. Um, you know, and, and what, what's amazing to me, you know, I have another friend too who also does another podcast too, and, um, you know, he's re really close to here. Um, you know, he considers himself a, a gypsy, and he really is a gypsy. You know, he bounces around, and, and when he when he's done with a spot, he moves on with the next. And uh, you know, and, and I look up to that. You know, to be able to um, take your um, reputation, to take your stories, and be able to move that to the opposite end of of the country, and and, and still have that following, and still have people. You know, come to you for for knowledge and come to you for that. You know, that's very on, on my part. It's I, I don't understand that, but it's very commendable. Um, you know, and I, I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful that you know uh, you could do that and bring your stories with you. And um, that's the thing I got to say I love about you is is the storytelling. That that that's my end all, and I'm gonna be quiet now. I'll have Alex talk. <laughs> <laughs> no. And believe that that he um, Oberon has taken a quest on on just uh, you know passing on his knowledge and, and being there for everyone who admire him and you know he's done that he's traveled to the east and and now back to the west and um, I'll hopefully hopefully I'll get to see him <laughs> Well, over the last couple of years, I've been on walkabout, and I've been not only all over the United States, but also in Mexico, Guatemala, Ecuador, That's and um, 
and I have uh, numerous trips that I've made to all over the world. Really, I've been to Australia several times, and um, and all over Europe. And um, you know, it's a funny thing. I really, I'm all about personally settling down and having my own little place. But people keep calling me out, so I kind of <laughs> have to go. If I get the calls, you know. You're you're a wanted man. <laughs> apparently, apparently, I have a price in my head. I suppose. <laughs> you're a wanted man. Hearts and public <laughs> need you, you know, and and especially this generation that of of uh, the, the millennials and technology, you know, we need you know leaders like you, masters like you that that have contributed so much to the craft, uh, to paganism, you know, you're the, you're still here with us, and that that is a, a huge honor. Yeah. Well, you know, so many of uh, all, all of my contemporaries really are gone now. I'm pretty much the last one standing from those old days way back there in the early '60s, and it's um, it's quite a thing to look around and uh, and see that uh, there's not a whole lot of other people there who <laughs> are far. So it's important to tell these stories because when I'm gone, uh, the memory of all this stuff will be gone if I don't pass it on. True. True. So I feel a certain obligation to to have the handoff. But the exciting thing to me right now is that we have come around again to the latest of uh, over 600 years of a 60-year cultural renaissance cycle that has occurred like clockwork every 60 years back to the Italian renaissance of the 1480s. Right. I mean, uh, 60 years ago, of course, was the New Age whole thing in the 60s. 60 years before that was the Golden Dawn. 60 years before that was the Transcendentalist Revolution. 60 years before that was the um, uh, a Age of Reason, the Enlightenment, they called the um, French and American Revolution. It goes on back all the way, every, every one of these. And each time this happens, those who are young people who come of age during this period, in their late teens, early 20s and stuff, shape a whole new cultural phenomenon that involves movements and waves and new concepts and it's ex exciting foment and this time boy we're going into this with a bang I mean first thing is the whole world gets gets turned off so we get to kind of go into retreat for a little while like you do when you have vigil before a great adventure you know you have to do the vigil so we've got that and and then now we're having revolution occurring all over the place for mm -hmm. great causes and social justice on all these different levels and it all seems very deja vu to me of course yeah. <laughs> I was right there last night you know but all this yeah. is happening. so it's really very exciting to be able to talk to the younger generation right now and say well now you know us old farts are passing the torch to you guys yeah <laughs> Yeah, and, and you know, this this radio show, you know, really took on a life of its own. Oh, even after five episodes of, you know, of bringing on elders, you know, we've been we've been having a lot of the elders being able to speak and, and you know, expanding that to, um, you know, the millennials and, and the younger generation, um, and I think it's great, and I think it really falls right into what's going on um, you know with everything with the world you know it, it, it really is it, like you said you know it's like you're reliving it you know it is it is the 60s almost all over again you know where we're looking at you know so the only thing that we can really look forward to is, is that we've grown from it and I'm hoping hoping that we do you know I'm hoping that we do not just that within the spiritual community but that the, you know the world itself well, I think we have and are, and um, one of the things I find really exciting, personally, of course, is that paganism is now, according to the surveys, the second largest religion in America. Yes. Yep. And I'm, wow, and I founded it, you know, so I'm like, yeah. wow, it's right? <laughs> the second largest religion in America. That's that's pretty cool. And I get to kind of be like Grandpa at Thanksgiving dinner, you know. <laughs> I get invited to all these things, and I get to say, Good job, kids. Keep there it up. How's the turkey? So Natalie asked, um, "Are you uh, or have you recorded your memoirs?" Well, yes. Um, to a great extent, this book here, "The Wizard and the Witch," is um, 
uh, Morning Glory is my life story, and it's oh, that's uh, a phenomenal cover. Yeah. Thank you. It's got it's got a whole bunch of pages and pages of photos of all kinds Beautiful. of good stuff. Wonderful. Yeah. So and they get that. the weight of. I'm, I'm definitely gonna buy it. Yeah, it's the if I if I send it to you, can you sign it for me? <laughs> well, I'm not the one you'd be buying it from unless I actually attend an event and have a booth there. I well, mean, how, be, how can how can our listeners get it? Well, uh, they can go to um, uh, my personal website, OberonZell.com, has a link to the store that has all my books and stuff. Um, well, frankly, you could also get it from Amazon or from the publisher. It's it's you know out there. The publisher is um, in Llewellyn for that book, so oh, it's pretty it's easy to find. Okay. If you buy it from my own store, of course, then I get a bigger piece of the action. Yeah, but, yeah. Always. <laughs> yeah. I also have. I, I also have. Uh, you know my my figurine. Yes, here. yes, which is I see it everywhere. I see it everywhere. It's yeah. wonderful, and it's funny because I did not know that you were the creator of this piece of art. Really? Yes. Wow. Yes, I only, learned it, my I only learned it recently. Yeah. Not a lot of people know that you were the creator of that. Really? So, yes. Yeah. I'm amazed. Yeah. Well, I, I I find that very surprising that I would put out all the stuff that's very popular and people wouldn't know where it came from, where it's where it's coming the world from. Is very vast. We we got, I guess we kind of got an exclusive, you know, to be able to to, to be able to share that with everyone. <laughs> we, that, we do. We we yeah. are able to share that with our listeners. Yeah, and uh, you know, even myself, I did not know when I um, you know hmm. was uh, get, gathering your your bio for for the show, you know, for promotions. I was like, oh my god, I did not know. Like, all these years, I did not know that you were the creator of that uh, that piece of art. Wow. Oh, Bron, I, I do want to, I'm going to send you the book that you uh, acknowledged, you know, Lady Rhea's book, The Enchanted Formulary. I have a copy for you. I'm going to send it, and I'll purchase your book through your website, and once I get it, I could send it to you. And if you could, you know, I'll send you the postage, and you could send it back to me signed. I would sure. love that. That would be such a treasure for me. Oh, well, I'd be happy to do that. No problem at all. If anybody wants me to sign a book, just send it. And that's only one, of course, a whole bunch of books I've written. This, uh, oh. this one's been really... Oh, that one's, yeah. Well, yes. This is actually the first book I wrote. I, I was like... Um, 60 something when I wrote it too it's kind of weird that <laughs> I waited that long to write a book I've, I've been writing a magazine I've been writing articles been publishing stuff they finally <laughs> dragged me kicking and screaming into the publishing book department business <laughs> it's very successful my books have been really well received and bestsellers and all that Absolutely. And, and of course that this led to the school the gray school of wizardry so I have a school and um yeah, I just keep busy. They just won't leave me alone. Yeah, yeah. That's, we, we get it. We get it. You know, it's both between both of us. You know, I have I have two books. I got two more on the way. Alex is okay. writing one right now. Uh, you know, we have the podcast, and I have uh, the my multiple events. I have the Pocono Witches Festival, and Alex is all over the place as well, teaching. And you know, it, 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 you get pulled everywhere. It, it's hard to put it all together, but we do it. And we, the reason why we do it, you know, it is is our love, you know, for you know our deities and our ancestors, and uh, you know, being able to be there for the community and share things and just like this podcast and be able to share stories um you know and and knowledge from from our elders and um you know give something like, give something back to the community really like i like i said to uh an old friend of mine um new york here in, in margo adler i said oh. margo you know it's a calling of the goddess and this is that's why i'm i'm now doing this and so you know right before she passed away and uh, it's just uh, it's heartbreaking to know that she's gone but she lives within my heart that was quite a year Margot and morning glory um, uh, let's see there was oh got Donald Michael Craig uh, Judy Harrow uh, quite a few significant people all went out at the pretty much the same time within just Sorry months of each other it was amazing 
2014. 2014. I, I think that they have, were calling a big event over there on the other side of some sort. Oh. And, um, and now they've got a big welcoming committee for everybody else who goes. <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, that was quite a year, and wonderful people—people people that I've have known and loved for so long. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm deeply grateful for having had 40 years with Morning Glory, but I would have liked another 40. We were not getting tired of each other yet, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Her last words to me before she died were, "Don't let it die." So I've been trying to carry on for both of us for the work that we did and, and the life that we led. But it's a little it's a little hard to do it um, without her because you know it was a partnership total. Yes, the priestess and the the, priestess, the wizard and the witch. You know that was us. <laughs> yes. My um, my love to her and Thank memory you. lives on. Yes. Yeah, she was um, she was something and and loved by everybody. Uh, one of our friends pronounced an epitaph about her. They said, she lived a priestess, she died a queen, she rose a goddess. Oh, yeah. gorgeous. And she was planted in a green burial on our land, uh, our, our sacred land of Onovan up in Northern California that, uh, that was passed to us from Gudeon when he died long ago. And she was uh, the one that uh, opened up the doorway for that land to be declared a legal cemetery for green burials and now there have been a few more after that but she was the first to have a full green burial and with an apple tree planted in her grave and the whole bit Beautiful. Oh. Beautiful. always so, giving well, back always giving back exactly that was that's the whole idea of, of that you know but that's what we do our, our time in the physical realm is is limited and we should make the most of it and, and take the most out of it, you know, and and pass it on. That's the whole idea. That and I, I, I'm delighted. I've been attending pagan festivals since they first started. This year, it would be the 40th Starwood Festival. They're doing it virtually like everybody else, but they're still doing it. 40 years, and I've attended all but the first couple of those, and I've always been there. And I've watched whole generations growing up and coming into their own and claiming their their identity and their power in the community which just grows ever stronger and it's it's really just a wonderful thing it's so heartful to see the whole family growing and prospering and you know and um and you guys you know carrying it on forward you know it's great i'm delighted that you're bringing in on a lot of elders i hope that they yes, they also yeah. say the same kind of thing about passing the torch and all that you know we yeah, are yeah yeah we, we are we have and our elders are something that we're, we're trying to get Selena Fox on board uh, to do the show as well. And uh, oh, Lady, Rhea, Lady Rhea will be on, you know, to give her uh, New York cheer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Selena has yeah. been around just about as long as I have. You know, when we see each other at festivals and gatherings, we yes. we're all there talking about the old days. You know, remember? <laughs> 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 yeah, and and then um, my Reverend Mother Lori Cabot. Oh yeah, uh, mm -hmm. you know she's been around as well. I know um, she's still there. She's still hanging she's, in there, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it was great when but, I was in yeah, school but, but, to just walk down the street from Gypsies and hang out with Lori. That was really nice, wasn't <laughs> it? Yes. But yes, yeah, it, it, it shows. It shows like ours. You know, it, it shows like ours that, you know, really, like you said, almost uh, solidifies and, and puts our, our elders' words in stone. Um, you know, because the internet is now the new stone. And, you know, we, we were able to have that, um, you know, by having this, this, this forum and this show to be able to, to really talk about it. And that's why, you know, with the, this whole wish, you know, the, the whole mission behind it is really to keep it flowing and natural you know rather than just questions you know oh when were you born and you know what did you do in this year and what do you do just keep it going and, and this is how we learn you know it's through those stories which is why i love and wanted to have you on the show was because of the stories and because 20 years from now when somebody comes across this 
it's the stories that are going to matter. It's not, you know, oh, well, he was born. Everybody's going to find out when you were born. Everybody's going to, you know, like, that's just the way it is. And that's why I wanted to keep the show just more organic and be able to just chat and, and, and really, you know, get to know it. And you're, like, the perfect guest to have because your storytelling, I keep talking about your storytelling, is just, you know, uh, amazing. It's, it's just magical. It's like listening to Merlin himself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing. I don't. I. I guess uh, people tell me about the storytelling thing, and I did, never really quite thought of it that way. That I was telling stories. I was thinking I was just, you know, talking about the old days kind of stuff. You know? <laughs> the conversation and memories and such. Morning Roy and I used to have a phrase. We were great fans of a writer called name of Ashley Brilliant that just has just genius, you know, short, short little things, and one of his we often found ourselves quoting was someday we'll look back on all this laugh nervously and quickly change the subject <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it yep it, no I, I try I, I get it too <laughs> I get right. that too I get that too well gentlemen uh, we're at about 15 minutes left um, so okay. for us uh, for, for over on we, we, we can uh-huh. chat for another about another five minutes. Um, you know, I don't want to overrun and take up your time as well. Um, no, and I. But what I'd like. Stolbron, go ahead. I want to ask Stolbron that if he would after the show and he would do a one-minute segment for Lady Rhea's Witch Pride Parade, which is going virtual this year due to the pandemic. It opens up our um, witch. Fest USA in New York every July. He's and he's so presenting this, this year, and and so he he could actually do a one minute uh, virtual and salute, you know, and and greet um, as a as a parade goer, you know. Uh, um, this is something this is something that would be great for for us to have recorded in for the parade, the virtual parade. And, and what's the uh, the name of the parade then? The ver- the parade is is Lady Rhea's Witch uh, Pride Parade. Witch Pride That's Parade. Broadway Lady Pride Parade. Okay. To Astor Place, where the uh, Witch Fest USA is is, ever, is held every July. Well, I'm I'm signed on for that. I'll be doing a few yes, workshops yep. and two virtually, of yep. course. Yeah. Right. The, yeah, the all, th- th- all three of us. Look at that. Three, three witch fest, three witch fest presenters right here, all at one time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. well, you know the real <laughs> kick about it is, I'll be doing a presentation at Witch Fest on Friday and on Sunday, and on Saturday I'll be doing one for Starwood, which is, you know, which would have been in Ohio. So Ohio. without going anywhere oh. at all, and sitting up here in this lovely little place in um, near Seattle, I'm able to be attending simultaneously two major festivals on the yes, other end of the yes, country. Yes, yes, And as I said, you know, with this, uh, I was saying before that you had come on, you know, that this pandemic really, you know, the silver lining in all of it is that, you know, it, it it's bringing a wider community together. And on, on the reverse side, it's able for people like us to be able to share our knowledge on the other side, you know, to be able to, to widen that as well, uh, you know, so as much as we really don't like being at home and not being around each other and being able to talk and, and really physically, you know, be with each other, um, we're actually able to, you know, to be able to share the knowledge that, you know, we have with, with a broader audience, you know, that's the, that's the civil learning, at least that's the way I'm looking at it, you know, to be able to, to get through all of this and, and, and really bring us together you know, uh, all of us together as one, you know, from all over the world and not just from New York or from California or right. things like that. You're doing yeah, that. That's, that's the nice thing. On Monday, I'm going to be doing an interview with folks down in Australia, you know, like this kind of a thing. And mm-hmm. it's, it's, I, I think that, um, well, the Chinese word for crisis also translates as opportunity. And I think yes. that's really very interesting. Yes. And if we can yes. extract the gift from any event, I mean, even something tragic as as um, a death in the family, like Morning Glory's passing, uh, gave a gift of compassion. You know, now I can tell somebody who's going through in impossible grief. I can say, 
I can feel for you. I've been there. I know what mm -hmm. you're going through. Mm -hmm. you know, and you can't do that if you haven't gone through this kind of stuff. And the same thing for here. We are finding new ways of communicating, new technology we're developing, and this will carry forward. It yes. will carry forward yeah. amazingly. Yeah. I can envision yeah. Well, Yep. And, you know, even 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 the events that are you know still going on, um, you know myself, um, you know Crystal Madison's um, Sleepy Hollow's Festival of Witches, you know they're in now at that time everything should be open and be going ongoing, but they're also going to do it virtually as well. So huh. now it's even being more expanded, you know, so you can be there physically, but if for those who can't or those who you know are worried about com still coming out because of COVID. You know, it's still being able to broaden. it. So now we just brought the made their community even bigger, but yet still be as one. And I think that's what's going to make us even stronger. You know, um, you know, as a community and as a whole, to you know, not not so much change the world um, in, in our views, but more to bring people together, despite everything else you know i think that's the biggest the biggest thing that's the education most thing. yeah well, yes it's it's education. and it unites the world i mean it really does yes. you know yes. in the old days we had to actually physically travel to meet each other in small groups but now with things like this we can be talking just like this with people all around yes. the world i mean look at the lineup of, of guest presenters for the witches fest yes all these yes. people you would never physically be able to get them all in one yes. place at Times. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It has yep. Exactly. Exactly. Well, it's, well it's we we are now at five minutes. I would love to sit and talk some more, but uh, we are at five minutes, and um, yeah, I like I like to wrap it up. Uh, Oberon, if there is anything uh, that you want to just lead our listeners to your website, things like that, let them know. Uh, stuff like that and what it will do is we'll close up the show and then I'll, we'll do a call back so that we could do that which uh, for the wish for uh, pride parade we'll do that real quick one minute you know real quick not, I don't want to take up all your time but um, uh, yeah so I'll, I'll, I'll hand it over to you and you can just you know promote yourself go ahead <laughs> well the, the main thing I would say to anybody who wants to know more about what I'm doing is to just check out my personal website because the links are there for everything. And if I tried to list them all, you know, Green Egg and uh, yeah. <laughs> Mythic Images and, and books and jewelry and uh, the 2020 Vision Project and uh, so many things like this. Um, the Gray School of Wizardry, of course, is, is really very important. And I really want to urge everybody who possibly can consider it to check this out because it is the place to pass on all of this stuff to the next generation and our um, I'm, uh, we have an amazing provost there uh, Nicholas Kingsley is my personal apprentice and he's like 26 so you know talk about next generation he's re and he's the provost of the school so we're you know we're making all this go on through so my website is um, OberonZell.com real simple there and all the rest of the links are on there, so you know, please check them out. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to end it with uh, Natalie Sedwick saying thank you to every one of us, uh -huh. um, and my mom who signed on said turn around <laughs> and say great podcast. So I just wanted to point that out. Yes. Um, That's cool. So other than that. Oberon, it was amazing to have you on. Love hearing everything that you have I have to say, and um, I can't wait to be virtually on the same platform as you for for Witchfest. That's right. That's awesome. All right. Thank you, yes. Oberon. Love you. Thank you, Alex, and saying thank you, Eddie, and it's been a delight to be with you all. Yes. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. So now we're going to have uh, another thing. Yeah, well, what we'll do is um, we're still we're still live. So I'm going to live. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you, you guys, you can you can hang up, and then me and Alex will finish up, close up the show, and then I'll give you a call right back. Call, call you, you back. back. Yeah. All right, we'll do that then. Thank you all. All right. <laughs> have Thank a good you. night. All right. 
That was great. Yes, yes. Oh my god, I love I love listening to all his stories. I love listening to all his stories. Oh my but yeah, god. we we are really running over on time. But you know, you know, I don't mind if we run over on time. See, and you always said two hours is not enough. But even though Oberon came on late, you know, it's always. Bron um, came on late an hour. He actually overslept. Yes. <laughs> but he came on, and he was with us, so it's wonderful. Yes, and we had Natalie, which was a really super yes, special Yes, it time. was. It was so sweet yes. to have Natalie. Thank you, Natalie, to be there for us. Yes, and uh, well, one of our listeners is going to be sharing this on uh, their pagan profile page, which is Espirito Pagano. Um, they're the ones from Mexico, so thank you for that. And um, Mexico lindo, <laughs> querido, so, los quiero mucho. <laughs> so yeah, you know, um, we talked about which match. We talked about uh, my event, and um, you know, basically, there's not too much left. I wanted to kind of bring up. I did want to add in, and I think we have two minutes to do this. So a while ago, I used to have this segment on my podcast called and I, I'm a huge fan of the of Family Guy. I don't know if you've ever seen it but I'm a huge fan of Family Guy and he, he did this thing one time on TV and it was called um, What Grinds My Gears and so I used to do What Grinds My Stone so I'd love to bring that back. Uh, we don't have enough time this week so maybe the next time next time we get together and we'll just talk about something that with, within the pagan community that really grinds our stones um, you know, there's something that really gets us going. Uh, so I'd like to bring that up for, for the next time. We didn't have time for this week, which is perfectly fine. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I do do want to talk about is, um, you know, where you can find us. You can find us on Spotify, our Heart Radio, iTunes, SoundCloud, and all of our all of the platforms it keeps growing every week we keep getting on more and more which is great um i think we're now up to 20 platforms um which is great and um you can listen to us live on facebook live uh right at facebook.com this old witch and you can hear us live on spreaker.com slash show slash this dash old dash witch dash podcast and search us on YouTube for our channel. Um, also, advertising, if you look straight down on this side somewhere over there, wherever my camera points, um, there are ads that are scrolling throughout the live broadcast. Um, with, it will be growing up to over 25,000 listeners once we go to radio. We're still working out a lot of the details. Now that we got the system going, we'll be able to go a lot better, but we're just still working out some of the details on that. And we'll be able to go worldwide on live radio, which will be also broadcasted straight out of New Orleans, which is awesome for our witch selves. And um, uh, so, anyway, you can. Get your ad right there for sixty dollars. For it'll run for six months, um, and it'll run every broadcast that we do. And uh, for one hundred and twenty dollars, it'll be six months plus. Uh, we'll mention your business live on the air, and we'll be able to talk about that and get maybe even get you on the air if that. We'll put your image on our website, social media, and all of our promotional material as a regular sponsor. Uh, for those who are interested in sponsoring the show, you can find us on uh, patreon.com uh, slash thisoldwitch and we'll have different tiers. You can get tickets for the Pocono Witches Festival uh, for our largest tier. Uh, we mention your name on the air and all kinds of stuff for our listeners to join in and be able to get that. As you can see, we have the chat going. But as soon as we go to radio, we'll have live calling, being able to call in and ask questions for us or any of our guests, which would be really awesome, too. Alex, if there's anything else that you want to add. <laughs> this city witch <laughs> sends my love to all and blessings on this happy solstice coming up with summer solstice. And I want to say blessings and love to all. And I hope that you know, we will work and strive and do better. And that is it. We are out and we will see you in two weeks. Yes. Good night, all. Good night. Blessed be.